Okay, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you the latest update on what's going on with our next pattern. It is bringing severe weather and a lot warmer temperatures. Plus, we have still this winter storm coming through. So, if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. My subscribers have been knowing about this cold front coming through for three weeks now. And now I'm updating them on this warmer temperatures we're about to go into. It is bringing severe weather with it. Now, you see, for this morning, we do have the freeze warnings over here for the West Coast, mostly the higher elevations of California. And we have that winter storm moving through. I believe it's winter storm Kate. And you still have the winter weather advisories in the purple and the warnings in the pink. Still bringing four to six, four to eight inches additional snowfall to a lot of people coming in this area. Then it's going to lighten up as it goes across the central plains towards Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes as we go into tomorrow into tomorrow night so we'll do another update on sunday what's expected is not much left out of this snow as this comes along but we do have a lot warmer temperatures coming we have a lot of high wind warnings all the way from alaska all the way into the u.s guys so i'm gonna give you all the latest updates remember timestamps and links will be in the description below now let's get to your information now you see with your temperature anomaly we still have those below average temperatures all the way towards the end of november Going out through the northeast as we get that cooler air coming in from the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, just like I told you before. But now we have this big warm-up that's going to be setting in all the way into Canada, all the way to the south. Now you can see here on your 500 millibar vorticity with the Euro that you have the storms coming in from the snowstorm. Then you still have them cooler temperatures coming on through all the way towards the end of November. Then we're going to start getting these very strong storms coming in all the way from the northeastern Pacific, right by Alaska, bringing a lot of high wind all the way around Alaska, all the way to the northwest of the U.S., bringing it all the way in for the beginning of December, and it's going to put that deep trough. You see a deep trough? It's going to go up on that ridge, and it's going to bring them storms coming through the center of the U.S., going towards the northeast. Now, placement is still too far to be known because it's past 7 to 10 days, so it's still too far to know if it's going to be in the center or further to the east. All we know is in this pattern, this is definitely having to set up for severe weather. And you can see this when you look at your 500 millibar winds with the Euro as the storm systems move in towards the end of November. It's bringing a lot of high winds all the way towards Alaska, all the way towards the northwest of the U.S. And as we get that troughing going on with that ridge, it's going to bring a lot of winds with that as well. And you can see now we have a wind alert for some winds that's going to be passing through all the way from the Gulf of Alaska, all the way through the western U.S. Showing that the risk of high winds will be from the 1st all the way through the 7th. You'll see it coming all the way by Alaska from the 1st through the 5th. And you see it coming through the west coast from the 2nd through the 7th. So you can see here with the Euro, as we get that snowstorm moving through the center of the U.S., getting lighter and lighter because it's going towards warmer temperatures, daytime heating, as it goes towards Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes all weekend long, bringing rain towards the northeast. We are going to get the storms coming from the west, and this is going to eject into the central plains as well. But you can see this coming in at the end of November to beginning of December, a lot of high winds, a lot of tight isobars together. And as that ejects into the plains, you can see it's starting to bring that severe weather risk with that as well. And maybe even multiple rounds of it, guys. But you can see it's starting to come in already. Now, you can see for the next seven days, this transition. This is bringing snowfall in the northern half. The southern half, you're going to get maybe a half an inch of rainfall, not a lot. But you see it is bringing some to the south and going across Florida for the next seven days, also towards the northeast. Now, more is coming after this. But you can see you still have that transition of this snowstorm. And as we go through today, later tonight, into tomorrow, it's really going to set up for tomorrow morning, bringing your chance of ice for the Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma, going into Kansas. Kansas, you are predicted to get maybe four to eight inches of snow, maybe around Wichita. But you see, as you go into Saturday night, it transitions over to maybe some freezing rain and some mix. So you got to be careful. There is going to be a nasty transition as it comes by the South Central. And as you go through Sunday, it's going to bring this across Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Now, the light blue is a chance for snow. The dark blue is likely snow as you go through Sunday, and you got the chance for the mix for the Ohio Valley through Monday, going out through the northeast, bringing rainfall. Showing just for the next seven days, additional snowfall coming through the Rocky Mountains, coming through the Central Plains, lighting up through the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and for the intercoastal northeast, getting a lot of that lake effect 
snow with it as well. But you can see it starts getting heavy amounts. Matter of fact, we have the new data up, the Sig Z, just for the next four days, bringing an additional four to eight inches, maybe even getting all the way towards more of a foot coming to higher elevations of Colorado. So whoever's up there skiing, you're really going to love this. And it's bringing another two to four inches across Nebraska, Kansas, even portions of Oklahoma. But you can see also a little hot spot over here for four to six inches. Then it lightens up as it goes across Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes. Everybody gets about an inch in the dark, maybe western, northern Michigan, a little bit heavier. You see you get that lake effect, snow machine starts kicking in, and the intercoastal northeast. Now you can see when you go a little bit further with the Euro as you go all the way Tuesday and Wednesday, it's going to add up to a little bit more. That lake effect machine is just going to kick in, and then maybe our next storm as we start getting that severe weather event, maybe another snowstorm is going to pass by and bring more additional snowfalls. Still too far to be talking about that, but that lake effect snow is going to start kicking in as we get all this cold weather. Definitely for western New York and western Pennsylvania. Be aware of that. But you can see here for this first snowstorm, why are you not getting a lot of heavy snowfall? It is coming through the daytime hours where it starts to warm up. When you start getting that warming going on, and you're getting them high 30s, right as that is swinging by. So as this is coming by, you start getting in them high 30s, and you get out of the freezing conditions as you go through Sunday. So if it slows down, you might get more snow, but it's just going to be a little too warm for all that to add up for everybody. So here's another look at it. You can see as it comes through on Sunday, you start getting that little bit of snowfall. It's not a lot of precipitation, but you can also see that it starts getting out of that freezing category get them daytime highs and it really messes up what you're getting out of them snowfall rates not going to be a lot guys with those temperatures it will add up for a lot of people just not as much on this first snowstorm but look, you can see the lake effect snow machine just kicking in after that now you can see here with the update on the eps the long range with the 50 members that exactly goes on that sharp dip then it just drags on all the way to the 10th and maybe even the 15th of December. Then we go on that above average, we go on that warm up as the cool air retracts back all the way until January and maybe a little cold front, nothing big. And you can see exactly that on GFS as that comes through and then we go on that warm up guys. And you can see this when you look at your tropopause way up there, temperatures by your jet stream, we get all this cool air coming through. And that will stop as we go towards the end of November, beginning of December. We're going to start getting this warm anomaly kicking in. And it's going to come even more on the West Coast as we go into the middle of December. A very big anomaly of warmer temperatures is coming in than what we normally get for this time of year. Now you can see this on National Weather Service. Next 6 to 10 day temperature probability. Still going to be below average as that Arctic front is still moving out. But you can see when you look from the 8 to 14 day here it is. Now we're going to a big above average pattern. So starting on November 30th, you're going to start getting these nice daytime highs as you go through the 1st of December. It's going to get even stronger with your temperatures and it's going to go further to the north. The 2nd of December, the 3rd of December, the 4th, the 5th. You got a lot of very warm temperatures coming through as we go through this anomaly, guys. And a good part that I love is the new drought map. So you can see how it has gotten better in the northwest. We still need more moving through the central plains. Also over here for the four corners. Arizona and New Mexico still needs that rainfall. But look how bad it has gotten for Louisiana and Mississippi, guys. Extreme drought has circulated into Mississippi real good. And I was going into northern Alabama, going to northern Georgia and Tennessee as well even going into portions of South Carolina and Western North Carolina. So they need this rainfall badly. It's getting worse. So you can see here for this pattern we're going into not only high winds, it is bringing a slight risk for heavy rainfall from the 2nd all the way through the 7th for the West Coast and for the South, right where you need that rainfall so badly from the 1st through the 4th of December. It is coming your way. Now you can see this with the Euro after you go five days, we start getting this pattern where this comes in from the Southwest and it starts adding up to rainfall over and over. Now this is your 10 days. So take this with a grain of salt because it will move. And if it's not going to be real heavy, you're going to get something out of this pattern. Hopefully it still comes and you get a lot of heaviness in this pattern. 
for a little bit of comfort, you can see how she go past seven days. GFS is seeing this as well and potentially hold up to a lot more. Now this is all potentially bringing in some severe weather as well. You see our dew point start kicking in really strong as it pulls up that Gulf moisture and stays in that pattern. Right when you go into the beginning of December, here comes some high 60s and maybe even get some 70s up in there. Very strong dew points coming in for the beginning of December. Also bring in some lift with that as well. You can see convection for the first and the second, maybe even lasting all the way till the third. So it's definitely got chances to bring that severe weather and we do have strong winds aloft as well. So I definitely will keep you updated about this. And you can see that here from your lower level winds with the Euro. As you kick in for the first, you get them strong winds aloft and it starts helping with your severe weather, also bringing chances for your damage and winds as it goes out through the Northeast on the second, maybe the third. And maybe keep happening over and over, but I know we're going into this pattern. Now, quick update on your temperature so you know what to expect. Here's your 20s again for tomorrow, covering a lot of the country, bringing a lot of them wind chills with it. Still bringing a lot of single digits, still showing negative 20 degree wind chills in the higher elevations of the Rocky Mountains, and it will warm right back up again for tomorrow. But you can see where your freezing temperatures is right where that snowfall is going to stay. Now, as you go through Sunday, cold airs can come right back down again and drag towards the upper Ohio Valley and the Northeast, bringing those wind chills again. And this stays cold, especially in Canada as well. I'm showing that Ontario is going to be cold and it's slowly going to move over towards Quebec. Now, your highs for Sunday will go right back up again. And remember, we are getting warmer as we go towards the end of November, beginning of December. But we do have this cold blast we got to deal with. Going through Monday, here it comes again with the cold temperatures and the wind chills making it really unbearable for Monday, guys. But it will warm right back up again for Monday. Remember, Monday through Wednesday is going to be the worst. Here's Tuesday, dragging it further south and east and the wind chills. You're going to feel it all the way towards the deep south, feeling like you're in the high 20s with the wind chills. And now the single digits and teen temperature wind chills is moving across the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley and the northeast. Now, Tuesday, it will warm right back up again. And then as you go through Wednesday, here comes a cold air again. But then we're going to start going through this transition, guys. But Wednesday is bringing wind chills with it again. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is really going to be some of the coldest temperatures. But it is going to warm right back up. This is on the 29th. After this, we're going to start going on that warm-up that I showed you before. And a quick update, link is in the description. The asteroid is headed towards Betelgeuse, the star Betelgeuse. So astronomers are excited, guys. On December 12th, the dark asteroid will pass directly in front of Betelgeuse, allowing observers to make a crude map of the giant star's surface. Now, if you want to see this, it will be a narrow corridor stretching from Central Asia all the way to Southern Europe, going all the way towards Mexico and Florida. And this will help them by revealing the shape and surface brightness of Betelgeuse. They can take that data and find out really when this star will finally explode. All right, thank you again, everybody, for your time. I hope you have a very blessed and a very great weekend. If you've never been here before, consider subscribing. That way you stay ahead of the weather pattern. Now, before you go on to your weekend, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 through 18. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always blesses you and keeps you and your family safe every single day of your life and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I will see you on Sunday.